Welcome to the Audience Growth Hack training series. My goal with this training is to massively shortcut your journey to create a raving fan audience that is predisposed to buy from you. Whether you're trying to get more people to buy your program, attend your webinars, or even come to your live events, this is the place to be. Now, in this first of three video trainings, you're going to get 10 audience growth hacks to start generating a steady flow of warm and even hot leads for your business. I'm Michael Neely. I'm a best-selling author and host of four podcasts, and for over five years, I've been teaching visionary solopreneurs how to grow their authority and expand their following through podcasting, virtual summits, speaking from stage, and getting published. And in this first training video, I'm going to teach you the secret sauce of these tools and why podcasting, when it's done right, is the future of building an engaged audience of buyers for your products and services. Right now, you're faced with a big question. How do you, as an entrepreneur, coach, consultant, author, or teacher, build a steady flow of hot leads who are practically pre-sold in your products and services before you even offer them? Well, it's certainly not magic, though there is a big trick to it. The goal of this workshop is to break it down for you and show you how to fill your programs and webinars and your events like never before. Now, here's the thing. When you have these insider secrets and you master a few of these tactics, you'll be amazed at the results that you can create. So before we jump into the content, though, I want to let you in on an important secret that the real audience builders like Joe Rogan, and Brene Brown, and Oprah know. And not only do they know this secret, they practice it. They know that in 2020 and beyond, information positions you as a commodity. And leading with information is the kiss of death for building an audience of raving fans and eager buyers. You might be wondering what to do instead of leading with information. We'll get to that shortly. You might also be curious about how I went from a rookie podcaster and coach to advising some of the most influential names in the transformation and personal growth space. And more importantly, how you can turn your expertise into a loyal following. So I want to start with what I believe and what I stand for. Now, if you're an expert in what you do, and you've spent years accumulating this expertise, you've been driven by something powerful deep inside you. And that something will never steer you wrong. And you can call it internal guidance, divine inspiration, God, goddess, or whatever works for you. I know it's in you, and so do you. And this force wants to express through you and as you in a unique way to change people's lives. And so I'm doing all of these videos because I fully trust that power inside of you. I want to activate it to bring it to the surface and help you make the impact that you're here to make through your expertise. So if that appeals to you, perhaps you also know that there's something within you that's been either diminished or confused or maybe sidetracked. Well, this is all about helping get that out so that you are the authentic, powerful version of true authority that you're meant to be in the world. Now, I didn't always know how to do this. I mean, <laughs> does anyone? It's not like we're born with this knowledge. As a matter of fact, when I first started in this business back in 2014, I had zero list, no connections, no product or program. All I had was an idea, and I didn't even know if that was a good one. What I did know was that I wanted to be of service. You see, I used to be a professional actor, and I knew that was my calling from the time I was in the fourth grade. I went on to get my degrees in acting, and I made a living doing it for 20 years. And then my son was born in Los Angeles in 2002, and I also knew I didn't want to raise him in the L.A. smog. That and the fact that as a C-list actor, I, I mean, it was hills and valleys. I'd land a job and make good money for one month and then not work for the next two or three, and to me, that was no way to raise a family. So we up and moved to Santa Cruz, California for the clean ocean air and the laid back lifestyle. And of course, I stopped my acting career. And truth be told, I floundered for several years before figuring out what my new purpose was, what I was here to do. Well, during my acting career, I'd done a lot of study into human psyche and ontology and our nature as humans being. I've done all of Tony Robbins' work and David Data and Landmark Education and Gay and Katie Hendricks. I mean, I've studied with the best. And so I started coaching. And it was during one of these sessions where a client of mine was having some great aha moments, and I asked if we should be recording this. So we did, and then we played it back, and he said, dude, that sounds really great. You should start a podcast. And I swear my answer was, what's a podcast? Now, I'm not a total old fart. You know, I'd heard the word before, but... I'd never listened to one in my life, and I really didn't even know what one was. Well, two weeks later, I had my first show up and running. And it didn't stop there. 
A couple months after that, I sat in on a webinar and I learned what a podcast could be. And at that point, I had this sinking feeling in my gut. I instantly knew that I was doing it all wrong. Literally. I mean, I, I immediately shut down my show. I hired a mentor and I relaunched a month later with new clarity, focus, and format. And that's when things really started to roll. The next thing I know, my list had grown to over a thousand and then 3,000 and then 10,000. I started getting asked to speak at events. I had my first book published and then I hosted my own live event. And during this time, podcasters who had far more experience than me were coming out of the woodwork to ask me how I was building my reach and influence so fast. I began to see exactly what they were doing wrong and exactly what I was doing right. I figured out the simple ingredients of my magic sauce, much of which I'm going to share with you here today. All right, so let's get started. In this first part of the video, we're going to focus on filling your offers. So let me just check in with you here first. Have you ever done a webinar where the registrations were just not what you expected? You know, you got a list of several hundred or maybe even a thousand or more, and you put out an invite and you get maybe 20 or 30 people who register. Or maybe your registrations go well and you do good with that, but then only a handful of them actually show up for the webinar itself. Well, the truth is, this is not uncommon in the industry. And while it used to be that registrations were better and the show up rate higher, as I pointed out earlier, people are just inundated with too much information. They're way too busy, and leading with information positions you as a commodity. And people are not only busy, by the way, they're also being more protective of their money, especially in this current climate. Open rates are down. Click-through rates are down. Engagement is down for information pushers. So, this challenge that you're facing is very real, and there's a very real solution. So what is the alternative to pushing information and accidentally positioning yourself as a commodity? Well, let's get one thing really clear right up front. In 2020, people don't buy your information. No matter how great it is, they buy the stand you take for them. When you are the ultimate stand for the exact results that they want, it's impossible for them to ignore you. Your stand is the only thing that makes you stand out in a sea of information overload. Your stand is what gets your ideal clients to know, like, and trust you more than all the information pushers out there. It attracts your people and has them ready to buy from you before you even offer your products and services. Now, there are many ways you can take your stand for them, and I want to demonstrate one of the most powerful ways of taking it right here, right now. All right? Do me a favor. If you're already listening to this with headphones on, or earbuds, if you're not, please switch to them, okay? Put on some headphones or earbuds. Pause this video if you need to, by the way, and once you're ready, come on back to it. All right, you ready? Now, I want you to close your eyes and relax. No visual distraction. Of course, if you were already listening to this without watching, I mean, maybe you're out taking a walk or driving, please keep your eyes open. But if you can do it safely, close your eyes and just listen. It's just me and you, my voice going into your ears and hitting you right there in your noggin, right between your eyes. Just us, me and you, very intimate. And here's the deal. That's the way people are listening to podcasts 90% of the time. On their headphones or their earbuds or in their car while they're working out or running or even lying down. Just you and your listener that brings you closer and they feel like they know you, and they can certainly trust you because they're letting you into their inner sanctum. Okay, you can open your eyes now. But I hope you get what I'm talking about here. It's also for this reason that podcast advertising outperforms regular radio and television advertising by 132%. It's the no lack and trust factor that is unsurpassed. So now, imagine yourself with a hungry audience that knows you, likes you, and trusts you because you're repeatedly taking a powerful stand for what's important to them. They've already proven by their behavior that they want the results that you can help them get. Then, you invite these pre-interested, engaged, raving fans to work with you. For many of them, it's an easy yes because of the connection and trust you've already created. That is the future reality that's waiting for you. It's not some dream or some fantasy. It can be your future reality. Of course, all of this is assuming that your offer is good and you've built the right audience, and we'll talk more about those things in the next couple of videos. But first, 
let's get to your audience numbers. How do you actually attract the right listeners to your podcast in the first place? And that's a great question. I'm going to cover some of the basics for starting your audience off right from the very beginning, and then we'll dig into some really cool hacks that won't cost you a dime to do. To start with, you'll want to be sure that your title grabs the right crowd. Let's use an example. One of my clients named her show Real Estate Investing for Women. Not frilly or clever, but man, that nails down exactly who the show is for and what she'll be covering. Make no mistake about it. Any woman who's interested in investing in real estate would be silly not to give that show a try, don't you think? Now, of course, it's then up to the host to create a show filled with great content in order to keep that audience. But that's a topic we'll dive into in another video in the series. For now, you can see that this would attract the right audience. Make sure that your title explains the who and the what, if at all possible. And you can use an egoic label when you can, if, if possible at all. Words like thought leader or visionary are good examples that will appeal to your listener's ego. Productivity tips for visionaries. The thought leader's guide to negotiating. Those would be a couple of working titles, good ones. One of my clients has a show called Inspired Nonprofit Leadership. Think you can guess who that's for? So your first key step is in picking a great title. And by the way, don't fret about getting it wrong. You can change your title every day of the week if you want to. Don't, but you can. And your title, after that, it becomes all about getting people to listen. So today, I'm going to share with you 10 of my favorite audience growth hacks. Now, these aren't in any particular order of preference, and these are only a few that I teach in my program, but I want to keep our time limited, so let's dig right in. Number one, one of the best ways to build your listenership is by being a guest on other podcasts. It's much easier to get interest from someone that's already a fan of the podcast medium than it is to convert someone who's never listened to a podcast before. So search out shows that seem to have similar audiences as yours, and then reach out to the host about the possibility of a pod swap where you exchange interviews. And by the way, this is the value of being a part of a robust podcast community like my new Podcasters Playground. You'll make connections that will support you along your podcasting journey. Number two, ask your audience to share about your show. Do this frequently, and if you can, incentivize it. You know, offer a shout out on the air or some other way of saying, hey, thanks for sharing. You gotta get creative here, but know that your fans can easily be converted into evangelists if you help it to happen. I teach several ways to accomplish this in my flagship course, the Zero to Launch Podcast Accelerator, which I'll share with you later this week. Number three, interviews. Now, I'm not saying switch your show to an interview style if that's not your thing, but I will tell you that some of the most successful shows got there because they were bringing in a bunch of guests who then were sharing about their episodes. You draw upon the followers of your guests, so even if you only do it on occasion, you may want to consider interviews for your show. And by the way, when it comes to authority building, this is a superb tool. Don't believe me? Take a look at Oprah. When she started out, she even had a hard time getting any network to pick up her show. And when she finally did, she started out small with lower level celebrities and experts coming on. And with each one, she absorbed a little bit of their authority. Their presence on her show took her up a notch or two. And each time it did, she gained access to another level of celebrities and experts. Until eventually, well, the rest is history. She can get an audience with anyone in the world. You can do this too. I even call it the Oprah effect. And the key is to use these interviews to raise your authority instead of accidentally lowering it because it's not just who you interview, but how you interview. All right, number four, search engine optimization. Be sure to post your show on your website and make it keyword rich. This will allow you to be found by people who may not be podcast listeners, but they spot your content and they give your show a try. Don't let your web presence fall behind. And also, by the way, don't freak out about like the feeling like the SEO and stuff is too complex. It's really simpler than it sounds, and I'll be there to help you along the way. Number five, of course, speaking of SEO presence and being found, you probably didn't know, but there are two billion app store visits every month across all platforms. That is an enormous opportunity for your show to be found in these searches if you take the step of getting an app for your show. And this can be done cheaply through some of the hosting platforms like Libsyn, so be sure to put that on your to-do list and reap the benefits. Number six, join Facebook groups related to your topic and create your own. 
And with the permission of the administrator of these groups, see if you can post about an episode. Don't be aggressively self-promotional about it. And whenever possible, you may even want to interview the creator of that group because then they may decide to promote the episode themselves. Great way to build an audience. Number seven, Twitter and other social media venues are also a great way to promote. Share your episode art, create mini videos or sound bites known as audiograms. Post those all over the place. LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you like to play, be there. Okay, number eight, I, I know we're not getting out there as much as we used to right now, but still, when you are out, be sure to have some postcards and business cards on hand, always. Place them on cork boards at coffee shops or your yoga center, if that's your thing. Wherever you go that has a space for it. I've been known to leave stacks of my cards in waiting rooms, hotel counters, restaurant tables. Be creative here. Number nine, create a meetup group. Now, these are mostly being run online right now, and I host three of my own. Start one that's related to your topic and begin to watch as people join. Put together a few meetings, share about your podcast, of course, the other stuff that your group is all about. But when this happens, you can watch your audience grow. And join other meetup groups if you don't want to start your own. Just always be sure to attend and share about your show. Number 10, and speaking of attending meetups, don't just stop there. Go to all types of events. In addition to hosting my own events, I attend anywhere from 8 to 14 events each year. For some of these, I'm speaking, some I'm sponsoring, some I'm just a participant. But at all of them, I'm sharing about my podcasts. My next event, PodQuest Live, by the way, is coming up in September. And during these coming trainings, I'm going to share with you how you can even get a first-class ticket, normally priced at $19.97, absolutely free. So be sure to attend all these trainings and the webinar for the details. And you know what? As an extra thank you for sticking around through this video with me, I'm going to give you one of my favorite, and people tell me my most brilliant, audience growth hack. You be the judge. Okay, here we go. Get some podcast cards done up in the shape of a bookmark, about two inches wide, six or seven inches long. Don't put your phone number or email on it, but instead put your show logo and a QR code, you know, one of those codes that direct links your traffic to Apple Podcasts. Also on the card, place a short message that says something like, readers of this book also found this podcast helpful or interesting. Make it match your style. And then a quick little spot that says subscribe on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are available. Now you got these cards. The next time you're in a bookstore, go to the section where you would find relevant books to your topic. So let's say your show's all about weight loss. Go to the diet section of the bookstore. One by one, pull down books on the subject and put your card in there before placing it back on the shelf. Now, of course, you're going to want to be subtle. It's not like you're not breaking any laws or anything, but the store owner or staff might not appreciate it so much. But think about this one. Your ideal listener just bought a book on the same topic of your podcast. Where else could you find the perfect listener so easily? I like to check out bookstores wherever I travel, and for the local ones, I suggest you visit them at least every couple of months for this practice. And by the way, you can do the same thing at your local library and even some hotels, lodges, resorts. They've even got many libraries where you could use this strategy too. All right. I hope these tips have been helpful for you. And I'd love to hear your feedback in the Facebook group along with any questions you may have or even some tips of your own. Our next training video is going to be about how to create seven revenue streams from one business tool. Because let's face it, growing a big audience without quite knowing what to do with them, can pose an entirely different problem. Imagine how different things would be for you if you had one single area of focus and seven ways to generate revenue from it. I bet you'd be making a lot more money. You wouldn't be exhausting yourself and feeling like you had to neglect the people you love just to build more income. If your strategy to make more money depends on you working harder, your plan is doomed from the start. So stay tuned for the next video and let me show you how to work smarter. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Welcome to how to create seven revenue streams from one business tool video training. Whether you've already got a podcast or you're thinking of starting one, this training will help to ensure that you're set up for success from the beginning and that you don't start with a weak foundation that causes your podcast efforts to quickly burn out and fade away. We're going to dive into seven specific revenue streams that you can create from one single podcast. Now, this allows you to focus your efforts for maximum return. Imagine for a moment having money coming into you from seven different directions, 
just because you're doing one thing. Now, of course, you have to do that thing extremely well, which is the point of this free set of trainings. Now, in the last video, we dug into some industry secrets about how to grow a faithful audience and develop a steady flow of hot leads and how to avoid being seen as a commodity. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please pause this one. Go check that one out now. I'll tell you right up front, the seven monetization methods you're going to learn in this video can help you whether you've got an audience or not, but they'll be 100 times more effective if you grow a big fan base to hear you and receive your gifts. So if you've begun to try out one or more of those 10 audience growth hacks we covered in the prior training, please share what you're noticing in our Facebook comments below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, are you ready to go? As I mentioned, I didn't start out with a pre-built audience or a top-notch show for that matter. I had to work towards building these. And I was fortunate enough to stumble upon some strategies that worked extremely well, not just for me, but for the hundreds of other podcast pros I've shared them with. Well, today, I'm going to share with you more insider secrets and tips, including ways to make money before you even launch your show. So we're going to cover some of the basic strategies that every podcaster should know, and then we're going to go into areas that, trust me, you haven't even imagined yet. And I'm going to show you how you can make it all happen fast. So if you haven't downloaded your seven ways to monetize your podcast with ease guide, it's on this page right now. Just get that and grab it and follow along. But understand this. The training we're going to go through will shine light on those concepts that you may miss if you're just reading the guide. Plus, we'll be adding some more great insights along the way, so please stick around and watch the video too. Now, the cornerstone of any type of selling starts with the same, pretty much universal everywhere you go. You first have to get your message in front of the right potential buyers. I mean, unless you're trained in some pretty cool Jedi mind control tricks, you may have a hard time selling a breast milk pump to an 80-year-old geriatric male. Yet, you'd be surprised how many people launch a podcast, build an audience, only to find that they started the wrong show. Case in point, me. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my show, Consciously Speaking, and it has done quite well for me, with over 2 million downloads and an amazing tribe of followers. However, when I first started it, I didn't know what I know now. I just started a show to talk about something I was passionate about. And I was fortunate enough to translate that audience into revenue with affiliate partnerships and eventually sponsorships, but it was nowhere near what it could have been if I'd started by reverse engineering my show. Now, here's what I mean by that. I built a large audience of spiritual seekers, but I personally didn't have anything to sell to them. I didn't have a guided meditation program, even though I'm certified in that. I didn't have an online course for them, not a membership site, nothing really. I was working with clients as a breakthrough coach, helping them overcome mental blocks, but mostly that was geared towards entrepreneurs, business people, not spiritualists. And while sure there's some overlap there, it wouldn't really serve my audience if I spent too much time talking about these business aspects. They wanted to hear about astral projections, near-death experiences, past life regressions, etc. Thus, I started my second show, Buy This, Not That, the Entrepreneurial Tool Review, to start growing an audience of ideal buyers for my trainings. So for you, let's start with what it is you have to sell. What is it? Do you want to sell an online course, your recently published book, a coaching program? Only you can determine that, but you must start there. Once you know that, we can begin to dial in on who your buyers are. That's what's commonly referred to in the industry as your ideal client avatar. Who buys your stuff from you? Is it single women between ages of 40 and 50, high schoolers preparing for their SAT, or maybe it's stay-at-home dads? Once you've got your avatar dialed in, the next part's much easier. What kind of show can I create to attract that audience? Now, that's a much deeper training for another time, but put that on your radar as you start to look at ways to turn those buyers into real-world revenue stream for your business. And here's why the reverse engineering is so very important. 62% of the podcasts that are actually making any money are doing it by selling their own goods and services. Their programs, products, coaching, you name it. They're creating it and then they're selling it. And to be frank, I imagine you're here because you've got your own wisdom, your own gift that you're ready to package and sell to the world if you aren't already. So monetization method number one is to sell your own products, programs, and services. That's a great place to start. But it's not the end. 
If you're just starting out and maybe you don't yet have your own products, programs, or services, you may want to consider doing what I did with Consciously Speaking. I'd done the hard part of building the following. Now I just needed something to offer them. So, in steps an affiliate partner. Someone who had a program that was in alignment with my own values as well as the mission and values of my show. This is monetization method number two, affiliate marketing. Now, what I did is I simply offered her goodies on my show, and I received a nice affiliate commission for every person that bought her program. Now, mind you, all we had to do in my show was to give away her free offer. It was pretty much a no-brainer. I mean, who doesn't like free? So my audience took advantage of the freebie, and then a few of them decided to sign up for her program. Now, you could be thinking, well, Michael, what's the difference between that and a sponsor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because after affiliate marketing is monetization method number three, finding sponsors. Okay, I hate to be a buzzkill, but I am a firm believer in telling it like it is. If you think you're going to make a ton of money through sponsorships, you are very likely going to go to bed hungry. I think it's this kind of pie-in-the-sky thinking that contributes to pod fading. That's the industry term for the ridiculously high number of shows that never make it past seven episodes. People come into podcasting with this grandiose idea that they're going to create a super popular show and get sponsors galore just throwing their money at them. And this, by the way, was also something I witnessed in the film industry as well. In hindsight, nearly every young actor starts out thinking they're going to be the one that hits the big time. And then there are those that I would consider the professionals, and I fell more into that department. Well-grounded in reality with the understanding that becoming a famous actor is like winning the lottery and not really the goal. Instead, we choose to focus on the job, the profession, our passion for the art form, and we let go of that ego-based uh, fantasy. Now, I'm not saying that this won't happen for you as a podcaster. You may make it big, but I want you to be realistic. Is this you buying a podcasting lottery ticket, or do you want to be a professional podcast host? All right, so to help you with that, here are some real-world facts. Major podcasting advertisers won't begin to look at your show until you're getting an average of 5,000 downloads per episode. Doesn't sound like too much, does it? Not until you hear this part. Only about 5% of all shows ever get to 5,000 downloads per episode. As a matter of fact, if you're getting 1,000 downloads, you're beating out 80% of all podcasts. To be in the top 1%, you'll need about 35,000 downloads per episode. Now, I'm not telling you this to discourage you, but because I want you to understand that, you know, this strategy, sponsorships, it's the weakest form of monetization until your show becomes super popular. And as if that's not enough, the advertising going rate for a thousand downloads is only about $43. So at 5,000 downloads, you're going to get 215 bucks. And it's not really enough to write home about, is it? But here's the good news. All right. Sponsorships are not where the money is. It gets so much better. Let me share a story about one of my clients. This particular one happens to be my former wife, Megan. We were together when I started my podcasting journey. And to tell it like it is, she was never really a big fan of it. She wasn't fully getting the podcasting industry, let's just say. Well, shortly after we split up, she came to me and told me she wanted to start her own podcast, and she asked if I would be her coach. So I helped her to get it launched using the reverse engineering we talked about earlier, and in her first month of being live, she landed a ticket sale for a retreat she was leading, bringing in almost $10,000 instantly. She is now a highly converted podcast believer, and she had something to sell and the right audience to sell it to. All right. So you're ready for monetization method number four. This method is known as the walled garden. Now, podcasts are free to the world. That's part of the beauty of them. Yet as you grow your following, your audience is going to want more. More from you, more from your guests, just plain old more. And one way to give it to them is by selling them tickets to see what's behind that wall. Your walled garden is where you keep the extra goodies, perhaps your outtakes, pre- and post-show chats with your guests, transcripts of your shows. You get to be creative here and see what your listeners want, and then you can charge them for access. I recommend that you have a tiered structure so that your patrons can settle on the level that they want. Maybe for $1 a month, they get a mention on your show, and maybe you post their name on your website wall of donors. For $5 a month, they get a transcript of the show and access to an outtakes track. 
I've seen walled garden offers go all the way up to 97 a month and include a group coaching call as part of the deal. You get to decide. All right, now for monetization method number five. I'll say two things about this one. One, you'll need to have a large audience to make it effective, or two, you'll need to provide some other form of ROI to make it work. This method is known as pay to play or charging your guests an appearance fee. I do this now for consciously speaking, and I'm only able to do it because I've grown that audience so much and the demand is greater than the supply. I get about 30 applications each week from people wanting to be in my show. I've only got one opening, so there is zero way I can come close to accommodating even a fraction of them. Therefore, those who want to get in need to pay a small production fee. It's currently only $397 per episode, but it helps to cover my costs and pay some wages. So if you don't have a large audience yet, you can still make this work, or if you provide some other return in their investment, it could help too. I know a podcaster who does his shows on video, and he offers his guests a highly produced video that they can use to promote themselves elsewhere. Now, this is more geared towards novices, but it does have some value, and the last I heard, he was charging around $2,000 for an episode. Now, remember, his offer is not about exposure, but about the video that's created, and that's a different value, and therefore, it needs to be marketed and sold differently, but it's totally worth considering. All right, for these final two methods, you don't really need an audience or to even have launched yet. Monetization method number six, it's all about the guest. Podcasting is a great way to get past a gatekeeper. So if you're someone who sells a relatively high ticket item, let's say 5,000 or more, what better way to make that sale than to get a sit down discussion with the decision maker? One of my podcast friends is a professional speaker. He gets paid twenty to $25,000 to MC big events, like those the corporations put together. So he often invites on event coordinators to his show. And during the conversation, which is also building report, he might question them about their big events and maybe drop a comment that he's emceed for some of the big hitters. And after the interview, he'll casually offer his services and it consistently lands him high paying gigs. And the cool part is those people are excited for the chance to talk to him. And even if he doesn't land the job the first time, he can always invite him back on. And finally, one of my favorites, monetization method number seven. I call this one freebies and write-offs. When you are considered a media entity in certain industries, this entitles you to some perks, like free admittance to events, press passes on occasion, but better yet, how about some free samples, trips, discounts, and more? Let me use one of my shows as a prime example. Something to whine about is my passion project. I love wine. And as the host of a wine podcast, I never pay for tastings when I travel to Napa or Sonoma, Paso Robles, or basically any popular wine region. It's an industry policy that you taste for free. And you usually get a 30% discount on your wine purchases as well. So that alone has saved me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the last year alone. Plus, and I have to express here that I'm not an accountant, although I have played one on TV, please do not construe this as tax advice. You should consider your tax professional. But... I write off my wine purchases and wine trips as part of my work, which is a pretty sweet deal right there. And as my parents always told me, a penny saved is a penny earned. So if you've got a passion or a hobby that you spend a lot of money on, why not create a podcast about it and reap the rewards? And here's the deal. If you are a hobbyist, one thing many of my clients come to me worrying about is how much time is it going to take to do this show? Well, the truth is, it's only going to take you the amount of time that you choose to give it. I now host four podcasts, all still running. Two of them are on a basic weekly release schedule, while the other two are more sporadic. That's my call to make. The two shows that are weekly end up taking me about four hours per week or about 16 hours per month. That's for two shows. If you're doing just one, which I do recommend to start, you can do it all in one day of work per month. And if that's too much, start a bi-weekly release and skip every other week. 26 episodes a year, four hours a month. Not only will you find it entirely doable, once you start to see the benefits, you'll want to increase it. Several of my clients that started with two episodes per month are now doing it weekly and occasionally adding a bonus episode too. And a few other clients have even gone on to add a second show. It happens. <laughs> and let me leave you with this for today. While the money that can be made in podcasting is really wonderful, there are, in fact, better payoffs. The first time you get an email from a fan telling you 
how your episode has impacted their life, how your words may have even saved them from the brink of destruction. Or maybe you just brighten their day in a way that they couldn't help but reach out and tell you. I've gotten these emails, and I tell you, those are the moments that are worth more than their weight in gold. And then there are the connections you'll make. <laughs> Some of my podcast guests have become lifelong friends. Some of them have become my business partners, clients, colleagues. Your network will grow, and the benefits that come with that are also worth far more than many of the sales you will make. They are priceless. So in video one, you got 10 specific steps for building a raving fan audience. In this video, you got seven revenue streams that can come from a single podcast. So you know how to grow your following, and now you know how to make money from it. Well, the next subject is how to create a unique, powerful show that you're proud of. One that helps you open the minds you're here to open. Make the difference that you're here to make and change the lives that you're here to change. Now, I know that might sound like a big task, but I want to make it simple for you because it can be much easier than you think. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to get your show launched and out there to the world in five simple steps. It's really easy. You're going to love it. And one of the best parts about the next training, I'm going to let you in on a few industry secrets that will save you literally hundreds of dollars and dozens of hours of your valuable time. And I'm going to cover how to think like a media company as you set out to create a winning show. We'll cover music, where to find it and how to use it. Editing, how it can be much simpler than you probably think. And a proven launch strategy that will immediately propel you beyond the podcast rookies and imitators. So please drop me a line in the Facebook notes below and let me know what ideas you've sparked around monetization. Which method or methods are you going to start with? And let us know what you plan to sell. I'd love to hear your feedback, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey there. Welcome to the simple five-step process to launch a rockin' podcast in just 14 days. Now, this quick and easy training got its name from the fact that it was 14 days from when I learned what a podcast even was until the day I actually launched my first show. And truth be told, it can be done even faster than that. Launching a podcast is easy. I'm not going to kid you about it. I mean, I literally could walk you through a process right now over the next 15 minutes. And assuming we're only releasing a five-minute episode, we could have a live show by the time we're done. And that is the absolute truth. We could also do all of this right here from my iPhone or an Android phone. But let me ask you this. Do you think it would be any good? Would it represent your best ideas? your deep wisdom, and engage the raving fan audience that your work deserves? I'd wager no. As a matter of fact, it would probably be even worse than not good. It would be ineffective on all counts. It wouldn't be serving the listeners, it wouldn't be serving the planet, and it certainly wouldn't be serving you and your business. And when it doesn't powerfully serve all three, you, the listeners, and the planet, it dies. Now, if you saw my first video in this series about audience growth and generating a steady flow of hot leads, you'll know how important it is to set yourself up for success from the start. And if you haven't seen it yet, please stop this video and go back and watch that one first. And if you haven't seen video number two, where I lay out the seven income streams that you can create from a single source, you should definitely check that one out as well. In addition to learning some incredible ways to monetize your show, you'll also get how important it is to create a show that attracts your perfect audience. And of course, if this is your first training video in the series that you're watching, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Michael Neely, and I've been teaching visionary entrepreneurs how to grow their authority and expand their following through podcasting, virtual summits, speaking from stage, and getting published for over five years now. And I'm a firm believer that podcasting is where the future of connection is heading. Now, I didn't always know that, and as a matter of fact, just six years ago, I didn't even know what a podcast was. But that all turned around quickly, and once my eyes were open to the potential in the space, it took off. And as a student of the industry, I can tell you this, the massive changes in the last year alone are a definitive signal that podcasting is on the rise. Here are just a few of them. Spotify adds podcasting to their roster. Apple decides to break up iTunes and give Apple Podcasts their own platform. 
Pandora adds podcasting to their mix. Spotify just recently paid Joe Rogan over $100 million for the exclusive rights to his podcast, making it only available on their platform. And currently, happening right now, Amazon Music Audible is adding podcasting to their mix. Now, there's really big money being poured into this industry, and for good cause. We are a time-crunched society. People are so busy that we're constantly trying to multitask, getting several things done at once. Have you been there? <laughs> and podcasting makes it easy for people to be educated, entertained, and even enlightened while they're doing other things. People can educate themselves with your show while they're on their commute to work. They can entertain themselves with your stories while they're on their jog. They can enlighten themselves with your wisdom while they're working out at the gym. Beyond that, podcasting is not a crowded medium either. Did you know that there are over 440 million blogs? How about that there are over 25 million YouTubers? How many podcasts? Well, we just surpassed a million about a month or so ago. Only one million. But get this, of those million shows, only 27% have put out any new content in the last 90 days. So that means that really, there's only about 270,000 compared to 20 million plus YouTubers and over 440 million bloggers. So if you want to rise above the noise, podcasting is the place to do it. So let's get into the how. How hard is it to create and publish a podcast? Well, as I said earlier, it's really pretty simple. And we're going to go over the step-by-step -step process of doing that in just a moment. But I also want to remind you once more, it's easy to launch a show. It's quite another thing to make it successful and to keep yourself podcasting. So I'm going to share with you my most powerful insider tips and insights along the way. And if you've already downloaded the uh, read-through guide, the work-along, stick around because we're going to really go in deep. I know that you have expertise, experience, and wisdom that the world needs, and I'm committed to your people hearing it from you. Okay, step number one. Let's hit the foundation. You would never build a house for your family without first laying down a stable foundation, one that holds everything in place so the house can withstand a hundred years or more of whatever nature throws at it. And even if you're not planning to podcast for a hundred years, your foundation determines how solid your podcast will be. What is your show going to be about? In the training on monetization, we talked a lot about your avatar, you know, that buyer of your products, programs, or services that you want to attract. So let's put that in action here. Start with what it is you're planning to sell. Determining your method of monetization will help to further define your show and lay this foundation. But since most podcasters monetize through selling their own stuff, we'll just play with that one, for example, here. So knowing what you want to sell and who will buy it are key to determining the topic of your show. Where are your ideal clients already hanging out? What types of shows are they tuning into? Once you know that, create the show that will attract them like moths to a flame. To create your show for that target audience, you can now decide whether or not you'll be doing a solo show or if you want to have a co-host. Determine the general length of your show. Will it be short form, like 5 to 15 minutes, or long form, going over an hour or more? Or maybe you'll land somewhere in the middle at around 30 to 45 minutes. It's entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong answer here. But I can tell you this, for someone just starting out, and especially if you're planning to do your own editing, all the work on your own, you may want to start with a shorter show. You can always extend it later. My goal, by the way, in all of my trainings is to prevent you from pod fading. And the best way to do that is don't start with something that's too much. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't overwhelm yourself. Same thing with your release schedule. If one episode a week feels like too much, start out with one every other week and take it from there. You can always add more episodes later. Not a problem. What day you release your show on is less important than remaining consistent. Pick a day and stick to it, as best as you can at least. People are going to watch your show at their leisure anyway, but I will also tell you that more downloads happen during the week than on the weekends. Now, choose your title, keeping in mind that it has but one singular objective. Make your potential listener think, Ah, this show sounds like it's a good fit for me. Keep it simple and explanatory if you can. 
One of my clients hosts a show called Real Estate Professionals. It's pretty obvious from the title who it's for and what it'll be about. And another hosts Getting Through Cancer with Courage. A person scouting for a new podcast to listen to could tell at a glance if these shows would interest them. Make your title do that. Now your show logo. That one piece of easy artwork that represents your podcast should be designed to jump off of a page among, let's say, 30 or so other logos, and it should catch the viewer's eye. That's its singular objective. Once it catches the eye, the title can do its job. So your logo will need to meet certain specifications that you can find in the downloadable guide on this page. So I'm not going to go into the details of them there, but I will tell you that it must meet these specs in order to be accepted by Apple Podcasts. And since we're on the subject of Apple, let me say this. You may not be a big fan of Apple. And, you know, I even know some people who just won't even touch an Apple product if you paid them. But you should know this if you're going to podcast. 60% of all podcast downloads occur on Apple Podcasts. The next closest podcast aggregator is Spotify at about 10%. And of the remaining 30%, Two-thirds of those are podcast players that scrape their data from Apple anyway. So it really boils down to this. If you are not on Apple Podcasts, then you pretty much don't have a podcast because you're unavailable to 80% of the world out there. So build your artwork to meet their specs and then let, us do it, let it do its job. Catch a viewer's attention. That's all it's supposed to do. And this is key here because I know there are perfectionists out there that let this kind of thing stop them. And I'm telling you, just do it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done. You can change your artwork, by the way, and even your show title every day of the week. I'm not recommending that you do by any means, but the point is launch first and adjust later. All right, next up, step number two, the right infrastructure. Infrastructure is all about what's going on technically to make the best show possible. Now, there are two key parts of the right podcasting infrastructure, your equipment and your hosting platform. As for equipment, I said it earlier and I'll say it again, you can record your entire episode on your smartphone. Beyond that, I do recommend that you get a professional microphone, which can be had for under $100. I started out with one of those uh, Logitech headset microphone combo pieces for about 25 bucks. In hindsight, it sounded pretty bad, but it worked. And eventually I upgraded to the mic I recommend the most, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. That's what I'm recording this on right now. It's versatile and perfect for podcasting. And I've got one, another one here to demonstrate for you. And if you look at the bottom of this, you can see it's got an XLR connector or a USB, which gives more versatility. It can plug right into your computer or into a something, of, if you like a portable device, it could record into a Zoom handheld, uh, the H4N Pro or the H6 Pro. So it's a very versatile microphone and it could be had for 99 bucks, I believe, on Amazon right now. And of course, then you're going to need some editing software, most of which you can record directly into. OK, so let me be clear on that. You can set up something like Audacity which is a free open source software you can download and use on Mac or PC. And I know a lot of podcasters who use it all the time. You can record directly into that. Similarly, GarageBand, Adobe Audition. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of Adobe Audition as it's more robust than the others. But you would have to pay about 20 bucks a month to get a subscription for it. And for me, though, it's worth it because of the time it saves me in editing far more valuable than the $20 each month. I mean, think about it. If you're spending $20 a month, but it saves you four hours, that's like $5 an hour. So it's worth it. Once you've got your mic and your software, you can start recording and editing your first episode. However, you're still going to need a place to put it when you're done. Now in comes the hosting platforms. Now to be clear, because there's a lot of confusion around this, Apple Podcasts or iTunes, if you're still in the old version, is not a hosting platform. That's like confusing the library with the publisher. A hosting platform is where you will upload your completed episodes and then they will be broadcast out, which is also known as syndication, to the various podcast aggregators. In the term of the industry, we call them podcatchers which is what Apple and Spotify and Pandora and all these other players actually are. 
So in selecting your hosting platform, you'll want to look at upload limits and download limits, long-term storage and statistics, among other things. Your upload limit requirements will be determined by the links of your shows and your release schedule. I'm going to break this down for you a little bit here. A 30-minute episode, when exported properly and on the right settings, should be about 15 megabytes in file size. So if you do one episode a week, you should never really need more than 75 megabytes of monthly episodes. Are you following me? 15 megabytes per episode, five times potentially in a month. If it's a month of five weeks, 75 megabytes of upload. But if you do two episodes a week, and they're one hour each, you're going to need an upload limit of more than 300 megabytes. So be sure to choose a plan that fits your needs. Now, here's the other thing that can be a little annoying to me, and that's download limits. Download limits are essentially something that only a few of the platforms really charge for. So be wary. If your show becomes popular, you could end up paying a lot for that good news when you really don't need to. I always recommend shying away from platforms that charge you more for your success. Some platforms will provide basic stats, but if you want advanced information like where people are listening geographically or technically, you may have to pay a little bit of a higher premium for that. Not much. Libsyn is my favorite hosting platform, and you get these advanced stats included at their plan price of $20 or more per month, anything 20 and up. And $20, by the way, gives you plenty of space. Even if you were doing a weekly show of 90 minutes each episode, the $20 plan is more than enough. So you'll definitely be covered there. All right, if you've got my download, you can use my affiliate promo code at Libsyn to get a month or two free when you sign up with them. And by the way, the promo code is 0ZERO, all caps. And again, you'll get a month or two free depending on when you sign up in the first month. And speaking of the download that's on this page, there are some accessories you may want to consider as well. You'll find these mentioned in the guide too. Like right now you see I've got a shock mount and a boom arm. You don't absolutely have to have those, but you may want to. All right, let's move on to the third step, your unique sound. Now to stand out in the world, you need a unique sound that captivates your audience and invites them into your world. Of course, there are a bunch of core elements of this, and one is the mood of your show. You'll want to select your intro and outro background music that matches the tone you want to create. Is the vibe you're going for more rock and roll? Or is it new age? Is it rhythm and blues? Or country and western? You get to decide. And as you're looking at considerations, think of it in terms of flow. If your show is fast-paced, then new age may not work. My recommendation is to go to one of the sources I tend to frequent, uh, most of the time at least, to start a sampling of some favorites. You can sort by genre, set up a free browsing account, and then save them to a folder. Now, my favorites are, I like to use audioblocks.com and audiojungle.net. And both are great sources for royalty-free music. Audio Jungle is a bit pricier, though st still very reasonable, but it also has a bit less of a stock feel than much of what you'll find on audio blocks. Like I said, I use them both frequently, so there's nothing wrong with either of them, and it's really going to boil down to you going in and listening to a lot of different tracks and finding what you like. Uh, here's the way that I coach my clients to do it, by the way. I recommend you go in, uh, either of them you can set up your own free account and just where you can create a favorites folder and narrow it down to perhaps, you know, five selections that are your favorites. Then you'll want to write your intro and outro narration. This is the introduction for each episode of your show and then the outro. And for your intro, which you can record yourself or have a friend or professional voiceover artist record it for you, you'll want to introduce the show and set yourself up as the expert that you are. Plant that flag in the ground and show it off with pride. you got to own your expertise in this intro narration. Then for your outro, you'll want to thank the listeners for tuning in, and you'll also want to put in your calls to action. Ask your listeners to subscribe. These are the ones who've already listened through the whole show. They're now in the outro. They're probably some of your biggest fans. So ask them to give you a rating and review and even to share it with their friends. Now, once we've got those recorded, I'll go over them with my clients and we'll play each different music track they've selected underneath the narration. 
Now, when you do this, you start to notice how do they play together? Okay, some of the music just may not sit right with the vocals. So this is a narrowing down process. We'll play it with one track and then the next, and then of those two, we'll decide which one gets eliminated. Then we repeat this process until you land on your favorite music track that works perfectly with your narration. Once your intro and outro pieces are compiled, it's time to record and edit your first episode, which is step number four, recording and editing for impact. Now, since you want to make an impact with your podcast, not just put out another show, there are tons of shows already out there. You want to have an impact. So there are a few things to really focus on here. There's an expression I frequently use in podcasting that I call GIGO, garbage in, garbage out, G-I-G-O. What this means is that if you start with a bad recording, you'll end up with a bad recording. Therefore, you want to make every effort to record things right from the get-go. This means making sure your room is quiet and there will be no disturbances, shutting down all computer software that is running in the background and is unnecessary, things like your mail server, your browser, even putting your phone into airplane mode is helpful. Now, trust me when I tell you, doing this is going to save you some big headaches later on, especially if you want to do minimal editing and you're doing it on your own. Once you're ready to go, hit record and start talking. For your first episode, by the way, I recommend you make it a short introduction to your show. No more than, say, five minutes. And in this, you're going to tell the listener who you are, why you created the show, what they'll get out of listening, what's in it for them, and, of course, what they'll get by subscribing, by coming back over and over. You're also going to want to tell them the logistics of your show. How long do you expect the episodes to be? Uh, when you'll release new episodes, let's say it's coming out every Tuesday. And the types of topics or guests as examples, people that you'll be having on your show and covering. You may want to script this episode if you're not good at speaking extemporaneously. Or you may just want to bullet your talking points and go from there. Entirely up to you. The good news is, is that since it's a really short episode, it won't hurt too much if you have to do a couple of takes to get it right. Now, once your recording is complete, the editing fun can begin. Your edit, here's the thing that stops a lot of people. Your edit can be what I would call a deep edit, where you meticulously go through the episode and remove every um and uh and other vocal tics like, uh, you know, and, um, the, and, 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 and stuff like that. Or you can go really shallow where you just trim off the front end. You know, maybe in the beginning you clear your throat before you start. Chop that part off. And then at the back end, maybe you left the recorder running and you're trying to find the stop button. Just trim that off. And then, of course, there's every level in between. What you choose will become part of your show style. I was being recorded as a guest one time, and the host dog started barking like crazy. And I paused and I said, hey, you know, should we wait until the dog stops? And he said, oh, no, don't worry about it. it. I just record everything and leave it as it is. Sirens, lawnmowers, makes no difference. Wow. Okay. Now, I would never do that myself personally, but if you're going to do that, which will save you a ton of time with editing, by the way, you'll need to be sure that your audience is aware of your style. If they've come to accept and maybe even uh, expect that type of a style, you're good to go. And a lot of people like that, that very raw, real feel. And when your edit is complete now, you'll need to add on your music, your intro and your outro, and then you export your finished project as an MP3 file. Now, it's this MP3 file that you're going to upload to your hosting platform for syndication. All right. During this upload process, when you're putting it into your hosting platform, you're also going to have a chance to put in your episode title, your show notes, your episode art. If you choose to make unique art for each episode, like some people will uh, do a graphic with their guest photo there. And if you choose to create special art for each episode, you'll get a chance to upload that there. And then you can schedule or release your show uh, immediately, depending on how you want to put them up there. Literally, you could schedule in all of your shows for as far into the future as you want, a whole year if you wanted to. Once you hit the publish button, it is sent out to the world, assuming it was scheduled to go live immediately. And it's also sent to all of your subscribers for their enjoyment. All right. Now, you'll also want to set up a player and a podcast page on your website and then post your episode there, too. All right. This way, people who are visiting there can listen to it on your website. 
And finally, step number five, your buzz building launch. As the title implies, this is about launching your show and what launch would be complete without any fanfare. You need your launch to build a buzz. Now, there are certainly some elements you'll want to have set in place before the big day. As, as an example, I mean, you're going to want to create a Facebook group where you can gather a bunch of supporters as your official, what I would call a launch team. These are the people who will go into Apple Podcasts on launch day and subscribe to your show. They'll download your episodes, give you a rating and a review, and share it with their friends. This is your launch team. And that's all they have to do, by the way. It takes them a few minutes on launch day. And a Facebook group is a great place to make this sharing easy. You can post updates and instructions to the group. Give them the links for sharing and keep them apprised of your efforts. As you invite them to join your launch team, be sure to let them know that you're not expecting a bunch of hard work from them. On the contrary, all they're going to need to do is give you about five to ten minutes of their time on the day your show goes live. And that day, by the way, is somewhat arbitrary. Now, once you've got your first episode uploaded to your hosting platform, you can then submit your show to Apple. All right. It takes at least one episode to go to Apple. This is a one time process, by the way, and it could take Apple anywhere from 12 hours. I've seen it happen that fast to as long as 12 days. I've also seen it going that slow uh, for them to approve your show. But once it is approved, you can select your launch day as you see fit. Your show may already be live, but no one knows it's there unless you tell them. So thus you hold off on giving it away until the day you plan for your official launch. Make sense? On that launch day, you will want to go live with five episodes, all right? One, your introduction episode should have already been posted, and then you're going to want to add four more. The reasoning behind this is that you will be doing a lot of work to get a lot of people to check out your show and to download it. And if you get a thousand people to show up on your page there, and you've only got one episode, well, you've just got a cap of a thousand potential downloads. But if you have five episodes there, that's the potential for 5,000 downloads right out of the gate. And this will play into Apple's algorithms for some subcategories. All right. You want to get noticed in subcategories. So have these episodes recorded, edited, and scheduled to release very early on your launch day. And then you can start to share links to your show in Apple Podcasts. Don't share them before your launch scheduled day because people will inevitably go there early. Share them specifically when you want it to go live. All right. Now, this is key here. During the first day or maybe even two of your launch, it's ideal to focus only on Apple Podcasts. Keep in mind, 60% of all downloads are taking place there. So you're going to drive your traffic to Apple in order to get organic discoverability. Now, these are the people in Apple who are looking for a new show to check out. And you want your show to appear in the top 60 in your subcategory. Now, while this type of launch, by the way, it's not some magic bullet, it's not a panacea, it's not going to make your show famous, it, it'll help you with two very important things right out of the gate, though. One, it's going to give you more social proof. When people do stumble upon your show and look at your number of ratings and reviews, and I got to tell you, nothing speaks louder of an unpopular show than seeing one that's maybe been out for two, three years, and it still doesn't have a single review. To me, that says nobody's listening. And number two, it will hopefully get you some bragging rights by moving you up the ranks. If you hit a high level on any of those charts, even in the subcategories, you can start to share about that and let people know. Now, this launch tactic, by the way, has helped many of my clients to get into the top 10, and some have made it all the way to number one in their subcategory. It's helped my own shows get all the way to number four, number 14, different categories. Uh, and with Consciously Speaking, I was able to pass Deepak Chopra, Brenda Burchard, and Byron Katie. It can work for you, too, if you play full out and follow this proven strategy. Organic reach achieved through making your show discoverable is a certain key to the continued success of your show. So you should always lean your decisions toward that and anything that will influence your discoverability. And here's a great litmus test to know if it's working. I love this one. I always tell my clients to celebrate their first one or two star rating and review. Celebrate it. I mean, why? I, I, they always ask, well, what? it's someone just gave me a bad review. Why would I celebrate it? Because that is a sure sign that people who don't already know and love you are finding your show. 
You know, it's easy to preach to the choir and great to get showered with love and affection from your family and friends, but that's not the end game. Your goal should be to reach the masses. And along with that will come the inevitable naysayer, the person who just doesn't get you or your message. Well, you need to embrace that. It means you're being found. And that is fabulous news. Now, if you're still on the fence about whether or not you want to have a powerful podcast working for you 24-7, doing good in the world, generating great leads, and positioning you as an undeniable expert, I've got an incredible workshop coming up that I'll offer on the 12th and 13th called How to Bulletproof Your Business with a Professional Podcast. Now, I don't need to tell you just how challenging these times are that we are a living in right now. It's harsh out there right now. I've been one of the fortunate ones, as have many of my podcasting friends. We've built businesses that allow us to work from home pretty much anywhere in the world. And our offers are typically recession-proof, and one could even say pandemic-proof. In this 90-minute live workshop, I'm going to cover exactly how to create a working business model that is supported by your podcast, allowing you complete freedom and flexibility. You'll discover how to build an information product line and sell your knowledge both in good times and in bad. How to price your offerings for maximum conversion and set them into a funnel that will run night and day and doesn't even stop when you go on vacation for a month at a time. So I hope you'll join me for this workshop by clicking on the link in this page or register with the link in the email invite that I'm going to be sending you out in a few days. It will require that you choose one of the two dates and times as you register, just so I can get a head count and send reminders only to those who want to attend. And finally, on Friday, <laughs> this is going to be a crazy day, on Friday, August 14th, I'm going to be hosting a 12-hour live stream running from noon until midnight Pacific time. Every half hour will be devoted to additional training and insights both in the world of podcasting and the supporting tools you'll need to maximize your profits. I'll send you a link for that as well, and I hope you can join me for as much of those 12 hours as you can. You will not want to miss this. All right, until next time, happy podcasting. If you're ready to go from being the best kept secret to the go-to expert in your field in record time, I'm so glad you're here. You've come to the right place. Now is the time to share your story. I'm Michael Neely, and I believe that graveyards are filled with too many people who died with their stories left untold, their gift left unshared, and it's my mission to change that. Your story is worthwhile, and there are people out there who need to hear it. You know the best way to share your message? Podcasting. It's growing by leaps and bounds, and it's a worldwide venture, unlimited by time zones or telephone wires. Consider the numbers right now. There are over 440 million blogs in the world and more than 25 million YouTube channels. Podcasting? We just hit 1 million. And of those, only 27% have put out any new content in the last 90 days. Meanwhile, more than 104 million Americans have listened to a podcast in the last month, and on average, they're spending 6.3 hours each week listening to their favorite shows. What does all of this mean for you? That there's a huge potential in podcasting if you set yourself up for success from the get-go. Podcasting has a potential to set you up as the expert in your field with worldwide reach, to find your community, to share your message, to supercharge your profits. It is hands down the best method for getting your message out to the world in a big way. And I can show you how to do it right every step of the way. I consider myself a messenger of messengers. I'm an authority strategist and business mentor and the founder of the Authority Academy, where I teach heart-centered business people just like you to weave together the four pillars of authority in a sequence that makes them exponentially more powerful and it reduces the amount of time required to truly move the needle. One of those pillars, in fact, the first and leading pillar, is podcasting. I launched my first podcast in 2014, and that show has gone on to 2 million downloads. And oddly, during my first year of podcasting, I started to notice a trend. Other podcasters were coming to me with their questions, and they had more experience than I did. And it made me realize a couple of things. In my own deep dive in the industry, I'd mastered techniques and developed a process of my own for speeding up the journey to success. So I went on to create my first online podcasting course, Zero to Launch in 14 Days, to support podcasters who wanted to up their game. 
But with all of the changes in the industry, just in the past six months alone, I knew I could serve people even better by building a more robust and comprehensive training. That's why I have since renamed, rebooted the all new Zero to Launch Podcast Accelerator. In it, I share the exact steps to get your podcast launched, to grow an engaged tribe of listeners, and to make it profitable all along the way. Anyone can launch a podcast. That's the easy part. But in the Zero to Launch Podcast Accelerator, you discover how to set yourself up for long-term growth, how to monetize your efforts, and most importantly, how to get your message out there to the people who need to hear it. Through 12 modules packed with actionable strategies and information, I cover every aspect of designing, creating, and producing a podcast, including the same time-saving methods I use to ensure that running my own shows don't take up all of my time. This course will remove all of the overwhelm over hardware, software, music, graphics, and recording. It'll remove all the guesswork around platforms, audience building, and show topics. Plus, I'm throwing in templates, group coaching calls, a ticket to my live event, guaranteed bookings on top-notch shows, and 17 other amazing partner bonuses for additional support. It's everything you need to grow your authority, become a well-known expert in your field, and to start earning more money. Like I said, podcasting is growing tremendously right now, which means right now is the time to get in on it. I'm here to share all of my secret weapons, the hard-earned knowledge, and even my ninja tricks for launching a powerful podcast that shares your message, grows your authority, and gives you a foundation for earning more money with your business. The best part? You can get started for just $197, plus you've got my ironclad 30-day money-back guarantee. Click one of the enrollment buttons on this page to get started. I'd be honored to have you in my program and serve you on your journey to podcast greatness.